Welcome. All right, so what I have here is y equals log. Um, now again, if we don't write the base, we know it's going to be base 10. So log base 10 of negative x minus 1. So when we look at this, we see that negative x, we know we're going to be reflecting the y-axis. And the minus 1 is going to tell us to shift the graph to the right, one unit right. OK, so again, to graph this, we want to graph the parent function and then apply the transformations. So the parent function in this case is going to be y equals log of x. And then we'll go and graph our final equation. All right. So in graphing our parent graph, again, we can just go and again just choose some values that we like to for our x and our y. All right. So again, if I go ahead and choose x equals 1, we know y is going to have to equal uh, 0. right? Because 10 raised to um, what power is going to equal 1? Well, we know y would equal 0. And again, a lot of times, I can rewrite this in exponential form. So it kind of maybe make a little sense for me. So if I was going to look at this, I'd say 10 raised to what power is going to equal x. And a lot of times, I always like to choose x equals 10 as well. So therefore, we know y would equal 1. So I can plot my two points at 1 comma 0 and then at 10 comma 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up 1. So therefore, my graph's going to look something like this. And in there, I know that I have an asymptote at x equals 0. I have a domain that goes from 0 to infinity. And I have a range that goes from negative infinity to infinity. All right. So now what we need to do is, we're, what we're going to do is, I need to apply these transformations. And what the plant transformations are going to tell us to do is to um, shift the graph one unit to the left, and then what we're going to do is reflect. And so there's a couple things you can always do when you want, when you want to go ahead and graph these, is you can go ahead and take a look at your log and you know, just go and plug it in with there. But you don't need to um, always go ahead and look at that because uh, what you can do um, is when you're applying this, just take your points, all right? And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I kind of missed one direction, but take your points and then reflect them. So if I actually just apply my reflection, um, shift it over first, then reflect, yeah. So if I take my reflection and reflect the y-axis, so here's my point at 1 comma 0. If I reflect this, it's going to be reflect over the y-axis. Instead of going over 1, I'm now going to go to the left one. So then I have a negative 1, 0. And then instead of having 10 comma 1, that's now going to be at negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Over 10, positive 1. So now my graph's going to look something like this. right? And then I need to shift it one more unit to the left. So therefore, what am I doing? That's 1 comma 0. So it's up there, right? <clears throat> okay. That's at negative 1 comma 0. Then what I'm going to do is now shift this graph over one unit to the left. So therefore, that instead of it being negative 10, 1, now my point is going to be at negative 11, comma 1. Instead of negative 1, comma 0, now my y-intercept is going to be at negative 2, comma 0. All right, now, since I've shifted the graph one unit to the left, my asymptote that was at x equals 0 is now at x equals negative 1. And that's going to change, that's going to affect our domain and range. Because if my asymptote now is at x equals negative 1, that means my domain is now from negative infinity to negative 1. And my range is still going to be the same of negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a logarithmic equation with a y-axis reflection and a shift one unit to the left. Thanks.